we have quite a few people on board. Uh, really quickly, before we take off, really quick show of hands. Uh, who's here on the studio tour for the first time? Any first timers here? Oh my, oh my goodness. Okay, wait, keep them up, keep them up. Oh my god, oh wow. That is a lot, that is a lot of hands. I feel like I've never seen so many hands uh, on one tour. That is crazy. Well, yeah, somebody said you better be good. So uh, the stakes are high. It's gonna be great, everybody. You know what, it's not gonna be good. It's gonna be incredible. It's gonna be amazing. And again, I don't have any script in my hands, so keep that in mind. Anytime that you think that I'm uh, really stressing out, it's because something's going wrong. But it's okay, everything's gonna be fine. You're in good hands. Make sure to watch those arms and legs as those gates come to a close. Again, my name is Jorge. I'm going to be your incredible tour guide. I'm going to be able to give you all of the behind-the-scenes insight on everything that's been going on here at Universal Studios. We are going to be exploring over 100 years of history as we make our way through our studio lot. And keep in mind that I am facing all of you lovely people today because obviously I want to see all your beautiful faces. But also, I am not allowed to drive these trams anymore because of what happened last time. It's so unfortunate, but it's okay. Because we are in the hands of one of the best drivers in the business. His name is James. Everybody say hi, James. Hi. Hey, James. James is taking care of us. He's going to be driving us through our studio a lot. I think we have the thumbs up, so make sure to wave goodbye to all of these lovely people over here on your left-hand side. Bye-bye, everybody. We'll see y'all later. You're never going to see any of these people ever again. James is our driver. I am Jorge, your tour guide. I have one more introduction to make for my co-host for today, who you might recognize as the host of The Tonight Show, and that's my jam on NBC. You know him. You love him. Everybody wave hello to Mr. Jimmy Fallon. Hi, Jimmy. Welcome to the Universal Studio Tour. I'm Jimmy Fallon. I'll be making sure you get through this experience in one piece. You've got the very best guy. Jorge. And the greatest driver. James. They're the best. I love them. Even though Jorge. Both me five bucks. I know you guys are excited to get on the tour, but first, a few safety rules. All right. Thank you, Jimmy. First, if you need guest assistance, have a medical emergency, drop something of value off the side of the tram, or have any sound or video issues, just reach up and grab that red E cord. That runs along the center of the ceiling of the tram, and I'll go back to assist you as soon as it's safe to do so. Otherwise, during the entire tour, please stay seated, keep your arms and legs inside the vehicle at all times. Remember to use that red cord above your head if you need any assistance. Please no smoking of any kind during the tour, and be prepared, everybody. Our tour today features loud noises, some tram movements, fire effects, and many water effects. Everybody say, ooh, ah. Ooh, ah, good ooh, ah, everybody. Make sure to have your cameras out for great photo opportunities. Keep an eye on them so they don't get wet. And finally, for your safety and those around you, please do not use selfie sticks while we're on board. Really quickly, this construction over here on your left-hand side is for a new roller coaster ride that we are building here at Universal. It's going to be based off of our Fast and Furious franchise, so make sure to check out our website and our social media accounts for more information on that. But let's get this tour on the road. We're making our way down the Universal timeline. You're going to see a few movie posters here that represent just a few of over 8,000 movies that we've been able to film and distribute right here. And above each movie poster, you'll see the evolution of our Universal Studio logo. We've been around for over 100 years. Our opening day was payback on March 15th, 1915. Our founder, German immigrant Carl Lemley, is right there on your screens as well. And those are a few historic stills of our opening day right there on your screens. Again, we've been around for over 100 years, and we are known as Universal City. Back in the day, we were also known as Movie City. We are a city entirely dedicated to making movies, TV shows, commercials, music videos, reality show competitions. So keep that in mind, everybody. Universal City has been dubbed as the strangest city in the world because nobody actually lives here. But again, we are a city entirely dedicated to the world of entertainment. But no city is complete without its very own active fire station. Our fire station is right here on your right-hand side. We also have our own sheriff substation, our own medical services, our own zip code. And believe it or not, we also have our own theme park here. It's called Universal Studios Hollywood. you got to check it out. Once we make our way to the bottom of this hill here, our first pit stop for today's studio tour is going to be exploring what we like to call the front lot. So it's one of the most active, most essential parts of our studio lot. It's entirely comprised of all three phases of the production process. So all of our production offices, the uh, sound and editing facilities that we have, all of our sound stages where we do a lot of active filming, they're all at the bottom of this hill. If you're not sure what a soundstage looks like, we're going to be passing by a lot of them, including one coming up on your left-hand side, Soundstage 12, built in 1928, the oldest soundstage on our studio lot. We were able to film sequences in there for Dracula, Frankenstein, Back to the Future, Jurassic Park, even a few seasons of NBC's The Voice were filmed in there as well. One recent production filmed in our front lot here was season two for the TV show Bel Air. That is a dramatic retelling of the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, starring both Jabari Banks and Ollie Schultz, and both of which are going to appear on your screen to give you a little insight uh, on their experiences while they filmed that TV show right here in our front lot. Here they are. Whoa, how many seats you here? I don't know, it's gotta be a lot. Here. 
You could probably fit the whole Bel Air casting crew in there. Well, we gotta get one of these for the mansion. <laughs> and for sure, you're lucky for y'all. The Bill Family Mansion lives right here on the Universal lot. Right. Some of Bel Air's most pivotal scenes have been filmed right here. Jabari, what have been your most memorable moments? Ooh, I don't know. I mean, there's so many to choose from. You know, I don't know before yourself when Will first enters, and at that moment, his life changes forever. What about you? Well, ooh. The Bel Air Academy gym set is here too, and I remember you having to sit in that cold ice bath for hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was really fun. <laughs> I still can't feel my toes. Now you might have been able to see that some of these sound stages have these huge doors on our, on our wonderful sound stages here. Back in the day here at Universal City, we actually had our very own zoo. We had a lot of animals that we would tend to, but back in the day, we would sometimes have these animals go into these sound stages. We would use these animals for all different kinds of sequences for all of our movies back then. So our doors on our sound stages are called elephant doors, but because of their Massive size. We're also able to bring elaborate sets of any kind of size, any kind, uh, for any production that's going on here at Universal. And in our front lot alone, we have 28 sound stages that we can use on any given day. These sound stages are almost entirely soundproof. So 80 to 90 percent of all of the filming that ever happens here at Universal happens in these sound stages, including sound stage 14 over there on your left hand side. That is the sound stage that we use for all of our mountaintop layer sequences for How the Grinch Stole Christmas, starring Jim Carrey. Also in the first ever Jurassic Park movie, when all the kids are all stuck in the tree and the, uh, the Brachiosaurus sneezes on the kids. That was also filmed over there. So it is left to the imagination of all of our filmmakers, all of our creative team, to build those sets and make them come to life once the cameras are rolling. And when we're filming, that part of the production process is called active production. But once filming has been completed, we go into what we call post-production. So we go into these offices that you're going to see in just a few moments, just past this uh, sound stage over here on your left-hand side. And this this is where we do all of our editing, all of our sound editing, our sound mixing. So the magic that you see in the final product of any movie or TV show, lots of times, it happens right over here. We have been able to film and produce incredible projects over the years, a few of which you can see in this montage coming up here on your screens. We do like to explore all different kinds of genres here at Universal Studios. We mostly make live action projects, but occasionally we'll collaborate with one specific production company to make animated movies as well. And you're gonna see their logo in just a few moments. It's very hard to miss. Their logo is right above a pair of minions, everybody. It's the logo for Illumination Entertainment. It's gonna be coming up right here on your right-hand side. And that logo, of course, belongs to Little Illumination Entertainment. We were able to collaborate with them to bring you Despicable Me, the Minions movies, as well as the Super Mario Bros. movie. That has now become their highest grossing movie to date. And the Super Mario Bros. movie has also become the second highest grossing animated movie of all time, right behind Disney's Frozen. So as we push forward, I hope everybody's excited. We are going to be uh, encountering our first celebrity signing of the day. Everybody say, ooh, ah, ooh, ah. If you brought a drink with you on today's studio tour, get it ready. We're going to be raising a Toast to my good friend. He's been waiting for us all morning long. If you don't have a drink, that's okay. Just wave hello to my good friend. He's right here on your left-hand side, Mr. Ted the Bear, toasting us with what looks like the dirtiest martini you've probably ever seen in your life, but do not judge him. Uh, he has a lot to celebrate. He's getting his very own TV show currently in development here. And for any production that's going on at Universal, obviously we have to start at the very beginning, doing all of our brainstorming, writing all of our scripts, doing our budgeting, picking which actors are going to be a part of our projects. All of those essential things have to happen before the cameras start rolling, during pre-production, inside these bungalows here on your left-hand side. Back in the day, these bungalows were used as dressing rooms for actors, but nowadays, they're occupied by production companies that like to collaborate with us here. One of those companies includes Mark Platt Productions. They've worked on movies like Legally Blonde, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, La La Land. They just recently completed filming part one for their movie adaptation of the hit Broadway musical Wicked, starring Cynthia Erivo, Ariana Grande, and Academy Award winner Michelle Yeoh. She just won her first Oscar earlier this year for her incredible performance in the Best Picture winner, Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. Now, as of yesterday, I believe, uh, there are some negotiations with the Screen Actors Guild. If you're not aware, as of the past five months, the Writers Guild and the Screen Actors Guild have been on strike here in Hollywood, demanding uh, better rights, more livable wages. So a lot of production is halted entirely because of that strike. But uh, the Writers Guild came to an agreement a few weeks back. Hopefully, the Screen Actors Guild uh, comes to an agreement sometime very, very soon, so we can get a lot more production up and running here. And usually, this front lot is usually the most active part of our studio lot. A lot of times, there's a lot of activity going on, and these uh, sound stages are buzzing with activity. If we aren't building sets in our sound stages, we are using our sound stages for active filming. This uh, sound stage right here, sound stage 25, was recently used for Lopez versus Lopez, starring George Lopez and his daughter, Maya Lopez. But as we round this corner, we're going to be leaving our front lot behind and actually going into the back lot. 
for the rest of our studio tour. So keep that in mind. If we aren't using our sound stages, if our budgets allow us, sometimes we're able to film in real life locations as well. But you have to consider the fact that if you're filming in a real life location, you're still a little limited in terms of how much you could actually utilize the space. So for example, if you're trying to film in New York City, for example, and you're doing some kind of huge action sequence on the streets of Manhattan, you can't actually destroy the city in real life. You have to use some special effects to make the city look a little more destroyed, right? But if we ever need to film in any kind of big city or small town, any kind of metropolitan space that we need a little bit more control over in terms of the look and the appearance, we come right here to our metropolitan sets to bring those locations to life. And look on your left-hand side. You have a beautiful view of our metropolitan sets. Just look how beautiful it looks. But don't worry, it gets better from here, everybody. We're going to be rounding a, a corner in just a few moments. We're actually going to be entering our metropolitan sets. You're going to be able to catch a glimpse of some of the incredible uh, metropolitan area that we have here at our disposal. And a lot of the buildings that you're going to see, they are accommodating for any regular businesses that you would see in real life. Banks, hotels, restaurants, apartments, bookshops, stores, offices, movie theaters, anything that you might imagine that we might need, we all got it right here. So keep your eyes peeled as we round this corner. You're going to see there's a lot of personality here in our Metropolitan sets. Even this huge wall that you see on your left-hand side actually is a part of a Metropolitan backdrop that we're able to utilize as well. But over here on your right-hand side, you're going to see a little bit of activity going on over here. All the way down that first street on your right-hand side, all the way down, is our Courthouse Square. That's where we uh, were able to transform our Metropolitan sets into Hill Valley for Back to the Future. And these golden buildings that you see right in front of you are a part of what we like to call our London Square. You'll notice the architecture here is different from the rest of the buildings that you're going to see in our Metropolitan sets. That's because our London Square is, of course, utilized specifically for any kind of London location that we might need for filming. Also, all the way down that second street is our Brownstone Street. Sometimes our characters need a place of residency here, so they usually stay in those apartment complexes down that street. But also, that trolley that you see passing by is currently on what we like to call our New York Street, everybody. Hey, everyone. Welcome to New York. I got my start right here in New York on Saturday Night Live. This is actually my old neighbor. Almost got mugged over there by an old woman. Tough lady. This is my favorite hot dog guy. Hey, buddy. How's it going? Remember me? No. <laughs> Just like old times. Gotta love New York City. I'm walking here. I'm walking here. Hey, it's cool, guys. I was just, you know, I was just walking there. So it's not exactly New York, but a lot of times when you see New York in the movies, it was shot right here on the Universal Metro sets. If you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. Even if you make it here on the Universal lot. Now, once again, you have a very beautiful view of our Metropolitan sets as of right now. Uh, but don't worry, if you're looking very closely at any of the brick walls that you see here on your right-hand side, you'll notice that they're not made out of brick at all. In fact, a lot of the buildings in our Metropolitan sets are almost made entirely out of plywood, plastic, and plaster. And that just makes it a lot easier for all of our set decorators to change the appearance of our buildings, to accommodate it, modify it for whatever kind of production is going on here, regardless of the time period or the location that we might be exploring. Now, we are going to be making our way up this hill in just a few moments. And when we do, you're going to get another nice vantage point of our New York Street uh, coming up over here on your right-hand side. And when you do, you'll be able to see that our New York Street has been utilized quite a bit throughout the years. Of course, we were able to use it for all of our obstacle courses for American Ninja Warrior. That is currently streaming on Netflix, everybody. So one of the newest seasons, all of these uh, elaborate obstacle courses that you see in that show were built and filmed all along our New York Street. We were also able to transform our New York Street into 1940s New York for Captain America the First Avenger starring Chris Evans. We also used our New York Street for uh, Spider-Man 2 starring Tobey Maguire, The Amazing Spider-Man starring Andrew Garfield. If you're a fan of Lady Gaga, her music video for The Edge of Glory was also filmed all around here. And you'll notice a lot of these buildings have interiors as well, which means that they are what we like to call practical sets. We're able to film both inside and outside almost every building that you see. So as we make our way up this hill, take one last look at our concrete jungle. We're going to be leaving our metropolitan sets behind. We're going to be going somewhere a little more exotic now, a little further away from society. As we make our way up this hill, there's a very ominous tunnel that's going to be waiting for us coming up on your right-hand side. You'll notice the entrance to this tunnel is lined up with a few skulls, a few bones. Don't be alarmed, though. Those just belong to all of the guests that have dropped 3D glasses over the years. So as long as you hold on tight to those as we make our way up this hill, you won't be part of the decorum for the rest of history. 
But I do want to check in. As we round this corner, I can see everybody. So hopefully everybody's doing okay up here at the front. How's everybody in Tram 2? Everybody doing okay in Tram 2? Tram 3? How's everybody in Tram 3? Tram 4? How's everybody in Tram 4? Wave hello to all your fellow neighbors, everybody. We're going to be going on a little adventure now, exploring Skull Island, the world of King Kong. That wonderful movie was, of course, directed by Academy Award-winning filmmaker Peter Jackson. And as we prepare to head inside, just a gentle reminder, remain seated at all times. Keep those arms and legs inside the vehicle. Hold on to any personal belongings you might have brought with you on the tour. The road might get a little bumpy. And here to uh, give you a little insight on what to expect is the man behind it all. Mr. Peter Jackson, take it away. We really put a lot of thought into the character and personality of Bond, And he's so much more than a monster. In fact, he's not a monster. You know, he is an incredibly majestic, ancient, creature, he's a force of nature, he's old, he's wise, he's proud, he's fierce, and obviously he has a heart. What a cutie. The most important feature with Kong are his eyes. Kong's eyes are wonderfully expressive, they're, they're full of emotion. His eyes are like a window into his personality and his heart. He's had an enormous number of encounters with his foes, the T-Rex, the time has come, everybody. We're going to be entering Skull Island. If you haven't already, make sure to put on those stylish 3D glasses. Our driver, James, is going to be taking us on a vacation far from Universal, far away from Los Angeles as well. So leave your troubles behind, leave your worries outside this tunnel. Have those glasses ready to go. Hold on to your belongings. Sit back, relax, and enjoy yourselves here at Skull Island. Everybody say, ooh, ah, ooh, ah. Y'all are getting really, really good at that. Oh, there are some of our dinosaur friends. Everybody wave hi to those dinosaurs. They're happy to see all of you. Hello. Oh. You know what? These dinosaurs haven't seen any human beings all day. I think they're just very excited to see all of your gorgeous faces. Do not be alarmed. Whoa! Man, look who it is! Look who it is! This dinosaur on your left is really one of our trams off the cliff, everybody. We might be going down anytime soon. Y'all better brace yourselves. Everybody say, Faces. I heard a lot of screams of excitement and joy. By the way, I forgot to mention this earlier, but um, I should have mentioned this before we left, but if you happen to be in a blue seat by any chance, you might get wet throughout this tour, so just look around if you're in a blue seat. Mentally, spiritually prepare yourself for whatever else is coming at you. Um, sorry about that, everybody. Yes, all your seats are blue. Prepare yourselves. But hey, we made it back. We made it back in one piece. All four trams are still intact. I want to see everybody. Uh, give me a big thumbs up if you're still here with me. Everybody doing okay? Okay, cool. Okay, well, of course, that was our incredible King Kong 360 3D experience that was shown to you on 16 movie theater sized projector screens brought to you by our friends in New Zealand at Weta Effects. They've been around for quite a while now. They've done special effects for King Kong, the Lord of the Rings trilogy, Black Panther Wakanda Forever, the new Obi Wan Kenobi series, as well as the new HBO series The Last of Us, starring Emmy Award nominee Pedro Pascal. They now have seven Academy Awards for their special effects. They won their seventh Oscar earlier this year for their incredible work on James Cameron's Avatar The Way of Water. Now when it comes to utilizing visual effects 
In a modern filmmaking, lots of times we like to rely on technology to bring our special effects to life, specifically CGI, computer-generated imagery. You can see a few examples of CGI right there on your screens. And as you can see, we use our CGI to bring elements of every kind to life into our stories. These elements could literally be anything. They could be a character, they could be a creature, they could be an explosion that didn't actually happen while we were filming. It could be an environment that doesn't actually exist. Any kind of uh, element could be brought to life using CGI. We can use our CGI to give these elements a certain sense of depth and reality. But everything that you see on your screens is added in after filming has been completed using CGI during the post-production process. But before CGI was even invented, filmmakers had to get really creative with their special effects. They had to rely specifically on practical effects. And practical effects have to happen right then and there on the set. The camera has to capture it as it's happening in real time. And one of our favorite collaborators with our practical effects are all of our picture cards. You'll see that we have one of every kind here. My best friend Bumblebee is here from Transformers. Make sure to wave hi to him. He loves saying hi to everybody. He would honk, but he's trying to be respectful of all the filmmakers that are working on the studio lot today. Now these prehistoric picture cards from the Flintstones are made entirely out of plexiglass and rubber foam. I'll explain in a little bit why that is. You're also going to see the Ford Anglia here from Warner Brothers, Harry Potter, and the Chamber of Secrets. But as we move forward, you'll notice that picture cars don't have to just be cars. You're also going to see a gyrosphere here from Jurassic World. If you're looking closely, you'll notice that gyrosphere doesn't have any windows on it. Usually when we're filming with picture cars on a set, we don't have any windows on our picture cars because we don't want any reflection from our camera crew while we're filming. We remove those windows during filming, and then we add them back in in post-production using special effects. Lots of times, as you can see, we like to utilize our picture cars for car chases, stunts, flips, explosions of every kind. And lots of times these picture cars have to go through the craziest kinds of stunts. We want to make sure that they can do more than one take of any stunt that we put them through. And for those reasons, lots of times that you see picture cars in movies, they are not made out of regular car materials. They are specifically designed to be able to endure all those crazy sequences that we have to film. And on certain occasions, sometimes these picture cars also need to be dinosaur proof. As we move forward, we're going to be going off the coast of Costa Rica, going somewhere a little more prehistoric. Welcome. Jurassic Park. Welcome to Jurassic Park, everybody. Here on your left-hand side are some of our mobile lab sets seen and used in Jurassic Park, The Lost World, directed by Steven Spielberg. These cages on your right are usually occupied by all of our animatronic dinosaurs, but I think they went on their lunch a little early today. Uh, looks like they were very excited to get up on that lunch break, but they're probably roaming around here somewhere. If you see them roaming around, do not be alarmed. In fact, they love saying hi to everybody, so make sure to wave hi. Oh, there's one right now. Everybody say hi. Hey there. That's them being friendly. That's just their way of saying hi. Don't be too alarmed. Jurassic Park is one of the most beloved and, of course, one of the most successful franchises here at Universal Studios. That first Jurassic Park turned 30 years old this last year. It was released in theaters on June 11th, 1993, and it was a revolution when it was released. Not just because of the excellent direction by Steven Spielberg, but also the groundbreaking special effects that it took to bring all of those dinosaurs to life. But in addition to recreating dinosaurs, we also like to recreate environments. We like to recreate the weather here. All of these plants and trees on your left-hand side are all fake. They're entirely artificial. We're able to use and collaborate with our greens department here to bring any kind of exotic plants or tree to life. Because lots of times in our productions here at Universal, we like to explore locations that are very, very far away from Los Angeles. Sometimes they're places that don't even exist. So we like to remain loyal to those environments, but we also like to use them to our advantage to help push our stories forward, to help tell our stories. Something as small of an element as rain can really impact the, uh, the, the, the effect and the, uh, the mood of a scene. Now this scene that you see right here on your screen, it's a little dark on your screen, but this is uh, something that's happening on the edge of a cliff on a dark stormy night in Jurassic Park The Lost World using our mobile lab sets. But this was actually filmed on one of our parking garages here at Universal Studios. We were able to collaborate with our special effects team to use some green screens to make it look like it's happening on the edge of a cliff. But we were also able to use certain uh, tricks, you know, collaborate with our wonderful special effects team to bring those rain sequences to life. And as we reach the bottom of the hill, we are entering what is known as La Fiesta de la Lluvia. That is Spanish for the party of rain. And coming up here on your left-hand side, our special effects team is going to be using some strobe lights and some thundering sound effects to make it look like there's lightning outside. But we need your help, everybody. On the count of three, everybody say the word action, and they're going to turn on those rain breaks, all right? One, two, three. 
Action! Hey, look at that. Look what you did, everybody. You made it rain here in sunny Los Angeles. Those are called rain rigs. They offer heavy, visible drops of water that are easily seen and captured by cameras. But if we need to, if it's dark outside, we can add in extra lighting effects so we can see that rain while we're filming. But if we need this off for too long, very disastrous consequences await us. So on the count of three, everybody say the word cut. They'll turn off those rain rigs, all right? One, two, three. Cut! All right, we got to make sure everybody sees the, says the word, okay? Let's try it one more time. One, two, three. Cut! I don't know. That should have worked. Maybe somebody didn't say cut. I don't know. Uh-oh. I think because of the fact that maybe not everybody said cut. Look what's happening. I think our flashlight sequence is coming by, everybody. Brace yourselves. That is our oldest attraction here at Universal Studios Hollywood. Using thousands of gallons of recycled water to make this effect happen. You can see our flash flood sequence used in Lady Gaga's music video for her song, Judas. Judas, Judas. If y'all haven't seen the music video by Lady Gaga, she also does some choreography for Judas right here in our Old Mexico set. So take a look around, we're entering Old Mexico. You can see our Old Mexico sets used as a wedding scene for What's Love Got To Do With It, starring Academy Award nominee Angela Bassett. We also had some filming done here for Nacho Libre, starring Jack Black. Nacho. As we move forward, we're going to be going away from our old Mexico sets, going across the border now into our Western sets, some of the oldest sets here at Universal. We have a nickname for our Western sets. We call this area here Six Points. Back in the day, in the early 1900s, all of our Western movies, all of our movies in general, they were all silent movies, everybody. We did not use any sound, we did not use any audio for any of our movies, so back in the day, because of the fact that all of our movies were silent movies, we were able to film six different movies, all at the same time, right here on this street that we're driving on right now. And on the ends of these streets, because of the fact that they were all silent movies, it didn't matter how loud we were, we would set up bleachers. On the ends of these streets, we would invite guests to come in for $1.25, and these guests would be able to sit in and watch active filming right in front of their eyes. So they could cheer on the heroes, boo the villains, they could be as loud as they wanted, and we could have six different movies all being filmed at the same time, because they were all silent movies. There's a new TV show called Quantum Leap that is uh, very much so a time-traveling TV show, and it uses a lot of our, sets, uh, our, our wonderful sets here at Universal studios, but specifically our western sets as well. And you'll notice some of the uh, the door frames here at Six Points look a little small, everybody. They look a little short. Now that's no coincidence. A lot of our male western stars back in the day, lots of those cowboys, were a little on the shorter side. So in order to save their egos a little bit, make them look a little taller, we would change and modify the size of our door frames here at Six Points to make our cowboy actors look a lot larger than life on the big screen. So for all of our short kings in attendance today, don't you worry, you have a home here at Universal too. I say that lovingly, by the way. You have a short king as your tour guide, so I stand in solidarity with all you short kings today. This beautiful body of water here on your left-hand side is our Park Lake. And due to its incredible size, we're able to use Park Lake for any body of water that we might need for filming. We can use it as a lake, we can use it as the Pacific Ocean. We even used it as the Amazon River way back in 1954 for our cult classic, The Creature from the Black Lagoon. And aside from being devilishly good-looking, The Creature from the Black Lagoon is only one of several iconic monster movies that were made here at Universal Studios. The Hunchback of Notre Dame turned 100 years old just last month, and The Invisible Man is turning 90 years old this next week. In addition to all those iconic monsters, Dracula, Frankenstein, The Bride of Frankenstein, The Mummy, all of them had their humble beginnings here, but more specifically inside of our Little Europe sets. And as we enter Little Europe, take a look around. Not only do we have beautiful architecture here, but also these cobblestone streets that we're about to drive on are accommodating for any faraway European country, city, town, or village. And if you miss the sign outside our Little Europe sets, we also use this entire area here as the afterlife for all four seasons for one of my favorite TV shows, The Good Place. But as we move forward, it's important to note that every single square inch of our Little Europe sets can be seen in that incredible show, The Good Place, starring Krista Bell. You, Eleanor Shellstrom. I've never ever seen all of this. You're in the I'm not supposed to be here. I can't risk going to a bad place. Maybe it's not all that bad. How can I help you? What is the bad place like? Well, it doesn't sound awesome. 
That show is currently streaming on Netflix. All four seasons utilize our Little Europe sets in almost every single episode. It's a really, really great TV show. But we were also able to transform our Little Europe sets into the land of Genovia for Disney's Princess Diaries 2, Royal Engagement, starring Academy Award winners Anne Hathaway and Julie Andrews. So next time you watch Princess Diaries 2, all the uh, times that you see the streets of Genovia, you're actually seeing the streets of Little Europe. But in addition to all of those incredible projects, of course, first and foremost, our Little Europe sets are home to all of our most iconic monsters. Dracula, Frankenstein, the Mummy, the Hunchback of Notre Dame, the Invisible Man, the Phantom of the Opera, the classic movies are just brilliant. That Frankenstein image, the Flathead, it's one of the great icons of the world. That to me was like the essence of the universe of horror film. I was just mesmerized by this movie. Boris Karloff, Juan Cheney. I remember the original Universal Studios Mummy movie really scaring me. It's still the in our memories now. We're already a little more than halfway through our tour, so really quickly, I want to check in with everybody. I want to hear everybody real quick. Uh, if you're still here with me, if you're alive and well, if you're having a good time, everybody say, ooh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Okay, okay, good, good, good. Good to know. I just like to make sure that everybody's still alive and well out there. Again, if there's any serious emergency, you know what to do. Just pull that red E cord. We'll stop the tramp. I'll go back to assist you as soon as it's safe to do so. Otherwise, make sure to remain seated at all times. Keep those arms and legs inside the vehicle. Drink your water. Stay hydrated. Or drink whatever drink you brought on the tour. I do not judge. I fully support any decision you're making today. And as we move forward, you're going to get another nice vantage point of some of our Western sets over here on your right-hand side. One of our most popular Hollywood stars that worked in our Six Points. His name was John Wayne. He was famously very tall. He was six foot four. Anytime that he shared any frame with any shorter Western cowboy actor off camera, those actors would stand on top of apple crates so that they could match his height a little bit. We had practical effects of every kind for all genres here at Universal Studios, including all of our monster movies, including when we made a mechanical shark for our 1975 film Jaws, directed by Steven Spielberg. And as we move forward, we're going to be entering Amity Island because all of you have been such a lovely group of guests. But uh, it's important to know there have been a few shark attacks that have happened here, but it's nothing to fear. As you can see on your right-hand side, the shark is out of the water, so there's nothing to worry about. My good friend George has volunteered to become a scuba diver, so he's out there making sure that the water is safe, that the coast is clear. So I think we're all safe. We're all in for a very peaceful visit to Amity Island. Uh, just ignore that fin out there. I'm not too sure what that's about. Oh, there's George right there by the boat. Everybody wave hi to my friend George. Hey, George. How you doing, buddy? You having fun? He said yes. Look at him. He's jumping up and down. He's screaming with excitement. He loves his job. He can't hold in his blood. I mean, his excitement, sorry. I didn't mean to say that. Sorry. Uh, we're going to keep moving forward. We're all good. Nothing to worry about. Just to be extra, extra safe, we're going to be going behind this dock because, as everybody here knows, there's no place safer than going behind a dock filled with the brim with flammable gas tanks. So just keep your eyes on the horizon. If you see anything suspicious, let me know. Give me a sign. But we're all good. Nothing can happen. Oh, oh you know what? Now would be a good time to mention we do have a mechanical shark in the water. His name is Bruce. He loves saying hi to everybody. So everybody say hi, Bruce. Hey, Bruce. <laughs> You can either say hi, or you can say, ah, either one works, he'll accept either one. That's my good buddy Bruce, everybody. He loves saying hi to all the guests, so if he happened to scare you by any chance, I'm sure he meant well. He's a really, really nice guy. He was not the shark that we used for Jaws, by the way. That shark that you just met is special all on his own. But the mechanical shark that we did use for Jaws, way back during filming in 1974, that shark had a lot of technical difficulties on set during filming. That's a much more shark. The shark is frustrating. It didn't really work all the time. It didn't work hardly at all. Wherever you were on the island, you could hear the radio waves. They were always saying, the shark is not working for me. The shark is not working. Now, the original game plan for the movie Jaws was to have that movie ready to be released in theaters by the winter of 1974. But there were so many technical difficulties on set, so many malfunctions with our mechanical shark during filming. Eventually, we had to delay the release of the movie entirely. We ended up releasing it in the summer of 1975. But it worked out just fine. Jaws was such a massive success. It was the first movie to have ever crossed $100 million at the box office. For that reason, it's considered the first ever blockbuster movie and the uh, director right there on your screen mr steven spielberg he was only 26 years old when he directed jaws it immediately put him on the map as one of the greatest filmmakers of all time he's been coming to universal to make all of his movies ever since and that nickname for uh, that wonderful 
uh, Great White Shark Bruce is uh, named after his wonderful attorney and lawyer, his first name is also Bruce. But as we move forward, we're going to be leaving Amity Island behind. You're going to see some of our residential sets over here on your left-hand side, including our chicken ranch house on your right-hand side. That is the uh, the wonderful house that was used when uh, Dolly Parton sang, I will always love you in the, uh, the best little whorehouse in Texas. This is a perfect example of what we like to call a practical set. We were able to film both inside and outside the house there. Now, of course, in addition to having our very own Metropolitan sets here at Universal Studios, we also have our very own small-town, suburban, residential neighborhood sets as well. And as we round this corner, we're going to be entering it. Welcome to Colonial Street, everybody. Every house that you see here is a practical set. We're able to film inside and outside every house that you see, including this bright yellow house coming up on your left-hand side. You can see this bright yellow house used throughout the four-season run for the Netflix show, Never Have I Ever, created by Minty Kaling. The main protagonist for that TV show lives in that house. You can see this house and Colonial Street be used quite a bit throughout that series. In addition to Never Have I Ever, we also transformed our beautiful Colonial Street into Wisteria Lane for the Desperate Housewives. If there is one thing everyone in suburbia can appreciate, it's a good name. Now, of course, just because we're filming in a neighborhood set doesn't mean it's always happy-go-lucky here. Sometimes if our scripts require us to, we have to have some crazy things happen in a neighborhood setting. So if any of you are familiar with the movie The Burbs, uh, starring Tom Hanks and Carrie Fisher, there's a house fire that happens towards the end of that movie that was filmed right here in our Colonial Street. So if our scripts require us to have a house fire or maybe a natural disaster that obliterates a neighborhood, we can come right here to Colonial Street, do all that destruction right here. But we were also able to use some of these uh, newer houses over here and this entire street for a new holiday movie that's going to be coming out very soon starring Eddie Murphy called Candy Cane Lane. It's going to be uh, available to stream on Amazon Prime on December 1st. And that wonderful movie was filmed all along here in our Colonial Street. So in addition to our Metropolitan sets, our Colonial Street is one of the most frequently used sets here at Universal Studios. We are going to be entering the final 20 minutes of our world-famous Universal Studio Tour. So again, if there's any serious emergency, pull that red e-cord. We'll stop the tram. I'll go back to help you as soon as possible. But as we move forward, it's important to know we are world-famous, everybody. Of course, our studio lot has been utilized quite a bit throughout the years. But also, our studio tour as a whole has also been a staple in pop culture and movies and TV. Even our studio tour trams have evolved over time, as you can see on your screens here. We've had a lot of different evolutions over the you know, over the uh, over the years here at Universal Studios. Back in the day, our studio tour trams were called Glamour Trams, and it is part of Universal lore that on the first day that we opened our gates to the public, uh, way back in 1915, all of our studio tours were an absolute disaster. All of our trams kept breaking down halfway through the tour, so all of the guests that visited us on that first day they had to walk the rest of the studio lot to get the full experience. But not all of you, y'all are too special for that. But in fact, we're actually hoping to replace all of our diesel trams and turn them into electrical trams uh, by 2025. But speaking of uh, trams, if you ever see a tram in any movie or TV show, you can also consider them as picture cars. And we have a few more coming up here on your right-hand side, including that green car right next to that double-decker bus. That green car belongs to Mr. Bean. Everybody say, aw. Aw, we love Mr. Bean. Also, here is a De uh, Decepticon cop car from Transformers and several of our picture cars from Fast and Furious, including Dominic Toretto's Black Dodge Charger. The newest installment to Fast and Furious, Fast 10, is currently streaming on our streaming service, Peacock, so definitely check it out if you haven't seen it already. But as we round this corner, I think you all deserve a little break. We're going to be paying a visit to the Motel de las Cucarachas. That was for Halloween Horror Nights, but a lot of you film buffs, all of you cinema lovers, will recognize this place better as the Bates Motel. This is, of course, from Alfred Hitchcock's 1960 classic, Psycho. Just this last September, Psycho turned 63 years old, and it is still considered one of the greatest films of all time. Now, usually Mr. Norman Bates, the uh, sole resident and owner of the Bates Motel, is usually busy during the day, but... Um, he, oh, 
Looks like your luck is about to change. He's usually not here to greet guests, but look who's waiting for us here on your left-hand side. It's Mr. Norman Bates. On the count of three, everybody say hi, Norman. One, two, three. Hi, Norman. Whoa, oh my goodness, he has a knife. He still thinks it's Halloween Horror Night, so on the count of three, everybody say bye, Norman. One, two, three. Bye, Norman. See you later, buddy. It's not Halloween Horror Nights anymore. You can put that knife away. We're going to be taking refuge inside this now destroyed New Jersey neighborhood. This is our incredible disaster site set from Steven Spielberg's alien abduction film from 2005, War of the Worlds, starring Tom Cruise. The airplane crash site set is a perfect example of a set that is all designed around the vision of Steven had. And for, again, to sit down and talk about the war of the world, but I thought, what if the 747 goes down right in a big neighborhood? Because it's, it's just something you don't see. This plane that you see on your left-hand side is a real-life Boeing 747 aircraft that was purchased by Steven Spielberg to use for the film. And he bought this plane and brought it out here to the studio lot for, uh, to use for filming for a total of $260,000. But as we move forward, speaking of alien production movies, we have one more set to explore on our studio tour today. It's the newest addition to our tour, brought to you by Academy Award-winning filmmaker, writer, producer, and director, Jordan Peele. He is the mastermind behind one of the greatest modern horror films in the past recent years. And uh, here to introduce you to the actual set that was used for filming for his third and latest feature film from last summer, his horror movie, Nope. Here's the man himself, Jordan Peele. Movie magic only happens when a team of collaborators, often in the hundreds, work together to take an impossible notion and bring it to life. This is Jupiter's Planet, a nostalgic, small-time Southern California amusement park owned by former child star Ricky G. Parker. Over there, look into the winking room and have your picture taken just like the kids in that old 90s movie can share. That's what this whole place is loosely based on. Remember that one? No? What? A little further down, you can see the brand new Star Lasso Experience. Built to showcase an unbelievable new live show. It's not looking so live anymore. Anyway, behind this Hollywood fantasy of a gold rush frontier town lies a sinister secret. Welcome to the world of the moon. Now, uh, we are in the middle of a UFO hotspot here, Jupiter's claim, and in the movie Nope, the UFOs disguise themselves as clouds in the sky. Y'all came on a pretty cloudless day here, so y'all are pretty lucky. But I'm not too sure where this type of power outage is coming from, so it might be cause for concerns. So we're going to be leaving in just a few moments, but take this in. This is the actual set that was used for filming for Jordan Peele's third and latest feature film, Nope. Starring Oscar winner Daniel Kaluuya, Kiki Palmer, Stephen Yun, and Brandon Bidet. Luckily for all of you, all three of Jordan Peele's feature films are currently streaming on streaming platforms. His debut film from 2017, Get Out, won him an Academy Award for Best Original Screenplay. He was the first black person to have ever won in that category. So his debut film, Get Out, and his uh, second feature film, Us, starring Oscar winner Lupita Nyong'o, are both on Netflix. His third and latest feature film, Nope, which we just uh, went through that set from, that is currently on uh, Amazon Prime, so uh, definitely check it out. Did you see a UFO in the club? Yeah. No. I have never seen Alrighty, everybody, as we move forward, we're going to be taking refuge inside this garage for just a few moments. All of you have become witnesses to all the secrets that happen here, all the movie-making magic that happens at Universal Studios. And for those reasons, we might be in a little bit of trouble. There's a man on the loose right now. His name is Mr. Owen Shaw. He thinks all of you know too much. He's going to do his best to make sure we don't get back to the theme park safely. But it's okay. We have an escape plan at the ready with some help from our friends from Fast and Furious in case he finds us. His name is Roman Pierce. Oh. Pleased to meet you. Our buddy Hobbs asked us to stash you from Shaw for a while. So we brought you in our secret spot. All right, look, guys, we're going to keep Shaw from finding you. But to keep you safe, we need your help. We don't want the syndicate tracking us here. So put away your cameras and turn off your cell phones. One flash or one ringtone could give us away. I need y'all to take this real seriously. Alrighty, everybody, it seems like there's a party going on in the next room. You don't need those 3D glasses on quite yet. 
But make sure to have your party faces ready to go. We want to blend in. Mr. Owen Shaw can't find us up here. So put your party faces on. Let's have a good time, everybody. Hey, 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 hey. Ooh, it's so good, it's so good, it's so good, it's so good, it's so good. It's so good, it's so good. <laughs> Not too sure what's going on, everybody, but just uh, sit tight. We're all good. Our friends from Fast and Furious are going to figure out what to do next, so just remain seated, folks. This is what we're doing. This is the race day after party. And where to put us? Roman Pierce. Roman Pierce. FBI, don't move. Neil, that's right. Party's over. You know how long I took the iron and shit, man? I'm, I'm not. You're under arrest right now. Right, let's, let's just back up a little bit. We got it. Slightly. First of all, I don't work for you. Oh, really? Well, tell me, Roman, who do you work for? We don't work for nobody. Now, I suggest you clear out of here, otherwise we can't guarantee your safety. Guarantee my safety? I'm the one holding the gun. Yeah, but mine's a whole lot bigger than yours. Um, that's what this guy was out. Let's go, Cookie Puss! That ugly suit on, man. It's cheap. Somebody out there really pissed off shop. It's gonna get ugly fast. Yeah, don't worry. Lucky for you, our whole family will protect you. Are you kidding me, Roman? You didn't shut off your phone, bro? I gotta call you back. I'm just, I'm gonna know this back. You see what I'm talking about? Call you back. Oh, man. It was all vibrating. Sure, I'll trace this. I just can't hold it forever. Buddy, Roman, we're up. <sighs> Try to move that vehicle. It's about to get real interesting. All right, you beautiful people. Now the time has come. Make sure to put on those 3D glasses if you haven't quite yet. Now's your time to do so. Our location's been compromised. Mr. Sean knows exactly where we are. He's going to be hunting us down. We might be in the middle of a high-speed chase as we go forward. But our driver, James, is going to drive us to safety, hopefully get us back to the theme park in one piece. So make sure to do your part. Remain seated at all times. Keep those arms and legs inside the vehicle. Hold on to any personal belongings you might have brought with you on the tour. And above everything else, make sure to hold on tight. Brace yourselves, everybody. Which one of you is the witness? Speak now or you all get fried! This is our turn.
Above everything else, we could not have done any of this without our incredible superstar driver, James. Everybody, let's make some noise for our driver, James. Round of applause for everybody. He's going to be taking us back to the unknown plaza so you can enjoy the rest of your day here at Universal Studios Hollywood. That does conclude our world-famous Universal Studio tour. I know somebody in the front asked me at the very beginning of the tour. They said, you better do good. So really quickly, did I do a good job, everybody? Give me a big thumbs up. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm so humble. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If it's your first time, second time, million time, thank you so much for taking some time uh, out of your day to go on this adventure with James and I. We had a great time showing you around our studio a lot. A big thank you to all of our annual pass holders as well. If you're not an annual pass holder, do not worry. I still respect you. I still appreciate you. If you'd ever like to get an annual pass, you can always check out the box office at the front of the theme park or at City Walk so you can find out how you can come back again and again. If you haven't already, highly recommend that you download the Universal Studios Hollywood app so you can check in on the park hours and the current wait times for all of our uh, rides and our attractions, including Waterworld, a live sewer spectacular, and Mario Kart Bowser's Challenge in Super Nintendo World. If there were any movies or TV shows that were mentioned or that you saw that you'd love to take home with you, you can also check out www.uphe.com or any of our retail locations for more information. And again, without our driver, James, y'all would have had to walk through 400 acres of land all by yourselves. So on the count of three, everybody say, thank you, James. One, two, three. Thank, thank you, James. My name is Jorge. I have been your tour guide. I had a lovely time with everybody here. Hope you all had a good time as well. Make sure to drop those street glasses to any of those bins. If you have any additional questions, comments, confessions of admiration, I'll be up here for a few more moments. But uh, have a great day. Stay hydrated. Be kind to one another. Be safe. And enjoy the rest of your day here at Universal Studios Hollywood, the entertainment capital of LA. I'll see y'all later. That is a wrap. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.